So my name's Jonathan Brett. I'm an addiction specialist, but I also specialize in clinical toxicology and pharmacology. Alcohol's been around for a long time. And when we talk about alcohol, generally we're talking about ethanol. So it's a substance that's produced naturally by fermentation of sugars and by yeasts. So people have known about it for centuries or probably even longer. The, the first documented case of people drinking ethanol socially was about 9,000 years ago in the Neolithic period. So it's been around for an incredibly long time as a substance that's been consumed socially, but also a substance potentially that's associated with harms. So alcohol has effects across almost every organ you can imagine. On the brain in particular, it acts generally as a sedative, but it's not that simple, unfortunately. It acts on many different parts of the brain as well. The main action that it has is uh, like, a, uh, like a, a sedative, like a benzodiazepine, such as Valium, but it acts in lots of different ways as well. Indirectly, it acts on morphine type receptors, cannabis type receptors, and lots of other different types of receptors in the brain. So what it does to the brain is, you know, it makes us, it makes us feel sleepy, but it also does a few other things as well. So it affects the front part of the brain and in doing so makes us less inhibited. And that might be part of the reason why people drink it socially, but that's part of the reason why it has some of its negative effects as well. And it acts on um, other parts of the brain, particularly the back part of the brain to do with balance as well, which is why when people are intoxicated, they look very unsteady. Outside of the brain, the liver is a um, pretty typical one. So what alcohol does in the liver, it, um, you know, probably a number of things, but it, it causes direct damage to liver cells. Um, so what happens is over time, the liver becomes more fatty um, and more inflamed. And that inflammation over time causes scarring of the liver and something we call um, cirrhosis. What happens when you have any substance that acts on parts of the brain that adapt rapidly is that you get two things happen. One is that you get tolerance. So the more you take, the less sensitive the brain is to that substance. And that's why people who drink alcohol frequently often do so to quite high levels. So it wouldn't be unusual for people to drink a liter or more of wine, for example, a day. And that's because their brain has gotten used to it, gotten tolerant to it. And the other thing that happens is something called withdrawal. So withdrawal is the kind of natural consequence of tolerance in that if you're not producing, if you're not supplying the brain or the body with that substance, the body misses it um, and goes into withdrawal. There are certain features we look for when we think about whether someone has problems with alcohol. They include the ability to control your drinking, so the ability to determine when you start and when you stop your drinking episode, and the ability to cut down and putting a lot of emphasis, so what we call salience, on your drinking. So for example, if you're um, what we call hanging out for a drink all the time, you, it's occupying all your thoughts, then that's a good sign that things might not be going so well and you know, you might need to think a bit more carefully about your drinking and about what you're gonna do about it, and possibly even seek some help at that point.